Hey, what's up? It's Dean Bakari. Welcome back to the Meaningful Show podcast. Listen, today we're going to be talking about how to use negative thinking properly, right? A lot of times this concept of thinking happy thoughts and being positive only and just focusing on the positive is just totally misunderstood because the truth is you need to use both positive thinking as well as negative thinking and above both of those you need to ensure that you're taking the appropriate actions right because no matter what you think whether it's positive or negative if you don't do anything about it if you don't do the damn thing then you're not going to get anything period there's not going to be a result without action right insight without action is useless so Let's talk specifically now about negative thinking. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to actually use negative thinking because a lot of people only focus on or only talk about you know, how to change negative thinking or how to stop thinking negative or how to avoid thinking negative. In this episode, what we're gonna talk about is not how to change it or how to, how to get rid of it, but really how to manage negative thinking appropriately and how to leverage it and how to use it to your advantage. So stay tuned, tune in. This is episode number 44, how to use negative thinking. So let's talk a little bit about how to use negative thinking, right? Most cars, if you can imagine driving a car and you being the driver and noticing that right behind the steering wheel you know you've got those little negative indicators right which are placed right in front of you if you're the driver to let you know when the battery's not charging or when the engine is becoming too hot or when the oil pressure is becoming too low etc etc right if you ignored these negatives in your car it could totally screw up the way that it functions right If you ignore these negatives, they could ruin your car. But in the same respect, there's no need to every time the service light comes on in your car to just totally get just stressed out and depressed and start freaking out, right? Like if you were driving around in the highway and all of a sudden your gas light came on or the engine service light came on and you just started crying, like you just started wailing like a child, and you had a passenger with you, they'd probably think that you were nuts, right? They'd probably think that you were a little bit crazy. So, you know, what you would want to do in that situation is pretty simple, right? You just take it to the mechanic, right? You just go and get it fixed. You just take a positive action of some sort to correct the problem. That's it. You get a negative signal, take positive action to fix it. It doesn't mean that the car sucks, doesn't mean that the car is no good, doesn't mean that the car is broken. Every car has problems from time to time. Doesn't matter if it's a Maserati, Lamborghini, doesn't matter if it's a Honda Civic. It has problems just like any other car can possibly have at any any possible time, right? So it doesn't mean the car is no good, just means that it's a car. Now, if you were just driving around and because you know that there could potentially arise a problem of some sort in your car at any point in time, because it can happen any time, right? Whether you're driving or when you get home or when you're on a road trip or on the middle of a, in the middle of a highway, problems can arise and you'll have to get them fixed, right? But just because you know a problem can come up at some point doesn't mean that you just focus continuously and exclusively right behind the steering wheel and you're looking down behind the dashboard area to see if any of the negative signals come up, right? You're not always looking to see if the gas light comes on or to see if the service the engine light comes on, right? You just notice it when it comes up and then you handle it, right? Because if you just focused only on the signal area where the service engine light would come up, then you'd get into an accident, right? You got to focus your gaze through the windshield and onto the road where the dire- in the direction that you're going, right? You want to keep your primary attention on your goal or where you want to go, 
right, from point A to point B. Stay focused, drive safely, and go and look into the direction that you want to go to, right? You just look every now and then, again, at the negative indicators to check and make sure, okay, this is cool, everything's all good, all right, let's keep on rolling, right? When you do that, and when you don't fix, fixate yourself on the negative indicators, and when you don't fixate yourself on the problems that could arise, then you'll be good to go, you know? You just want to focus again on the road, and you want to concentrate on where you want to go, right? So this is the type of thinking that we need to adopt when it comes to solving our own negative problems, right? When you have an issue, and I'm a big, big believer that negative thinking can help us when it's used the right way. I don't believe just purely on positive thinking. I think that when we use negative thinking, when we use it appropriately, then it can help us out, right? We need to be aware, though, of the negatives so that we can steer clear of the negatives. If you think about a golfer, right? A golfer needs to know where the bunkers and the sand traps are, but he doesn't need to think continuously about the bunker, right? He doesn't need to obsess about it because that's not where he wants to go. He doesn't need to think continuously about the bunker where he doesn't want to go. What he needs to do is allow himself to glance at the bunker from time to time, but focus on the green, right? Where he wants to go. And when you can use this type of negative thinking the right way, just like this example I just gave you, then you can allow it to actually work for you and you can actually l use it the right way and let it lead you to success, right? So it'll only work though if you're number one, sensitive to the negative to the extent that it can alert you to any potential dangers that arise or problems that might come up. Number two, that you recognize the negative for just exactly what it is, which is something that you don't want, right? Something that could potentially be a problem and something that doesn't bring happiness to you. And number three, that you take immediate action and substitute a positive action when you receive a negative signal, right? And when you do this, it'll create sort of an automatic reflex for you, which becomes a part of your inner guidance system, I like to call your compass, so to speak. And negative feedback can act as a sort of automatic control to help us steer clear of failure, steer clear of problems and pain, and to guide us to success. And that's it. It's very simple. Don't focus on the negative stuff too much, but make sure that you understand. You gotta glance over at it every now and then, check up on it, make sure you're okay, and then keep going, keep focusing on getting the things done that you wanna get done and doing it happily. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Meaningful Show Podcast. Hey, hey, it's Dean Bakari. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Meaningful Show Podcast. I greatly appreciate it. Listen, if you'd like the show notes for this episode, just click on the information tab over on iTunes or on your Stitcher or whatever app you're listening to this podcast on and click on the link in the information tab. It'll take you straight to the dedicated post page for this specific episode, which is located on MeaningfulHQ.com. Com. Again, that's MeaningfulHQ.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next episode.